Today's video is sponsored by Woodworkers Guild of America. Woodworkers Guild of America is your online resource for instruction, information, and ideas. I would like to thank Woodworkers Guild of America for making this video possible because we are going to be giving away a dining room table. There will be information about that later on in the video, but let me tell you a little bit about Woodworkers Guild of America. Woodworkers Guild of America is a community of woodworkers that come together to master their craft. On Woodworkers Guild of America, there is a vast collection of tutorials that you can find through questions and answers, blogs, and even videos just like this one. Now, because this video is going to be about a limited number of tools, I have been learning a lot about hand tools recently. One of the ones that I have really, really enjoyed is how to sharpen, specifically how to sharpen planes so that they can give you nice curly shavings. So now that we will be doing a giveaway on this video, Woodworkers Guild of America wanted to extend an offer so that the first thousand of my subscribers can get a premium membership to their website for only $1.49 for an entire year. Just follow the link in the video description below. Now you may be thinking that Woodworkers Guild of America may not be for you, but is indeed for everyone because you can be a beginner all the way up to a master craftsman and still get valuable information from their website. So again, I would like to thank Woodworkers Guild of America for sponsoring this video and making this giveaway happen. So make sure that you follow the link in the video description below to get your premium membership for only $1.49 for an entire year. Thank you again, Woodworkers Guild of America for sponsoring this video. Now let's hop over and I will show you exactly how we can make this table and some details on the giveaway that we have going on. My name's Andy, this is Cedar River Woodworking, and welcome to the shop. I live my own. Here is that dining room table that we are looking to give away. I will have details on that later on in this video. I did want to make this dining room table available so many people can make it, so I'm not gonna be using big industrial tools like a table saw or even a miter saw. So I will be using a drill and a circular saw for this build. Along with Woodworkers Guild of America, I do want to thank Dudak Custom Kitchens for helping out with this build as well. I will have more information about them later on as well. So because we are going to be giving this away to one particular family, I do want to extend a little bit of an offer to everyone else. I do make plans for most of my builds, and this is one that I'm going to be having plans built for. And so in the particular case of this one, I did wanna give away some of these plans. And if you are a member of the channel, there's a little button down below that says join. If you click that, it's going to be a monthly subscription to the channel. It really helps us make videos like this and giveaways like this as well. But if you are a member of the channel, I will have in the community tab plans for free on how to build this table. So it's designs like this one that have helped me grow my business and invest back into it. And now I have some pretty high quality tools solely based on the things that I've sold and reinvested into my business. Now we do have a goal of hitting 50,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. And we do have a stretch goal of hitting 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. So we really need your help on growing this channel and growing our community. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these uploads. So now that I've taken so much of your time, let's hop over to this build and I will show you exactly how we make this table. Well, like we said, all you're gonna need is a circular saw for this part. So we are trying to make a table that is 72 inches long by 36 inches wide. So you can see out here in front of me, I have seven two by sixes laid out side by side. Now you can skip this part and leave the rounded edges on here and go straight to the joinery section, but I like to have a tabletop that doesn't have all these ridges in it. So we are going to take them off of here. Now, because we aren't using a table saw or a joiner, we are going to have to use a miter saw and a straight edge. So this straight edge is a eight foot straight edge, and we have just a regular cordless circular saw. You can use this a corded circular saw, that's perfectly fine too. I do have a newer blade on here. You are going to want one that's a decently high quality. I will have everything linked down in the video description below that I use. So what you're gonna need to know is the offset of your base here. So I would like to use this wider section here to the edge of the blade. Now this is about five inches, and these boards are five and a half inches wide. So that's gonna put my straight edge all the way out to the outside edge, and I'm not gonna be able to clamp it down. So unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to use the smaller side. And for mine, to this edge of the saw blade, 
It is an inch and three eighths. So I'm gonna space this straight edge about an inch and a half out from the edge of my boards here. So give me a second and I will clamp this down and then I'm gonna show you how we make these cuts. So now that we have our straight edge lined up, I have a battery in my circular saw here and we're gonna go ahead and make this cut. What this is going to do is give us one straight edge. Once I'm done cutting this, I'm gonna leave this clamp to it and I'm gonna push the other board next to it and then I'm going to continue to cut that board until we have a tight gap right inside of here. Let me show you. Now once you have that cut done, you may have some small pieces inside of this gap that look like this. Our goal is to just cut off the rounded part, but uh, if you get into a little bit of the meat of the board here, that's perfectly okay. But we will want to take out any of these little scraps. So now that we have that kerf cut out and the rounded edges cut it off of our first board, we are going to take the second board and just butt it up next to it. Now you may see that there's some weird gapping in here and we're gonna take care of that with this. So we do not want to clamp this because then it's gonna cause it to shift or bow while we're making these cuts, but just kind of loosely rest it up here against this. So then once we have it just butt up next to this other one, we're gonna make that cut again. So what that is going to do is this straight edge is gonna be in the same exact spot, so it's gonna give us a matching edge to this other one. It's kind of similar to the in-out method if you have a joiner, or you can do the same method with a track saw if you have one of those. All right, now I did have to take a couple passes for this to line up exactly how I wanted to because the second board had a little bit of a bow in it. But now you can see that this edge lines up perfectly. We are just going to continue this process down these boards until we have all of these joints that match up just like this one. I did leave the outside edge here with the roundovers and that one there because there will be a final trim to width at the end of this. I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these done and I'll come back and I'll show you exactly how we are going to secure all of these together. I did want to note that I do have a piece of styrofoam underneath this to protect my bench. If you don't quite have a bench yet, this is a great option to have so that you can put on your concrete floor so you don't damage your blade or your concrete floors. I'll be right back. So here we are with all of our tight joints and uh, you can see a couple of these have a little bit of gaps and we can tighten those up even further if you want to. The biggest thing that I want to note is that the entire width of this is over 36 inches. So I wanted to give this as much room as possible. I'm at about 37 and a quarter right now. So I can tighten these up if I need to. Now on the overhead camera here, you might be able to see that I have some lines laid out on here. These most outside lines are at six feet and the lines inside of that are going to dictate what our joinery is. Now, some of you may not have wide enough clamps to clamp up this entire panel, so we are going to use a pocket hole system. I know that's not everybody's favorite, but it is what we're gonna use on this beginner project. So the lines that I have laid out inside of that six foot mark are laid out at eight inch intervals. So what that's going to do is these lines are gonna be close enough together so that if there's any warping or anything like that, we can take care of it when we clamp this thing up with these screws and get everything glued together. So I have everything set up to the inch and a half setting and I'm just going to drill out some of these holes. Now I'm not going to need to put any on this outside piece here because then I'd just be running screws into air. We don't need that. So these other six boards, I have them laid out. So I have about 60 holes that I need to drill here. All I need to do is just line up one of these holes with the lines laid out on the face here. Babbity rabbity and the cackling stump. Well, now that we have all of our holes drilled into this panel here, we need to secure it together. I will be using some Type Bond 2 wood glue on this. It does have a longer setup time than Type Bond Original. 
I'm going to put glue in every single one of these joints and then I'm going to screw them together because I'm going to be using calls. So currently I have this raised up a little bit on some two by fours with parchment paper underneath of it. And then I'm going to be taking some more two by fours and putting it across the top and then clamping down the ends. This is going to help keep our panel nice and flat. Now, most of the process of keeping a panel flat is going to be with the joints. If they fit into each other like this, then when you pull them together, then the boards are going to come down and that's where you're gonna get some cupping on those joints. Now, how we cut it, say your blade isn't 100% at 90 degrees and it's off at an angle like this, well, cutting the other board in parallel with it when we put those together, it's gonna to give a nice tight joint. But these coals are going to help us out with that also. So I have some parchment paper cut off to the side here and that's also going to go down once we get the glue on here. The screws that I will be using are two and a half inch pocket hole screws. Remember, I will have everything linked down in the description below. I do have this little tiny J roller that I'm gonna to use to spread the glue out here. Remember, you probably don't need to go too much farther than the six foot marks because that's what we're gonna be cutting and these end pieces are gonna get cut off of here. So you don't need to waste glue, but it is a good idea to go a little bit past. So then you have a full joint all the way through. So I'm gonna use this for a glue spreader. You can use the ones that you were born with. That is perfectly fine too. Now, once we have all of these glued up, we're gonna lay them all flat, and then we're gonna put the coals and screws into this. So once we have the coals clamped on here, I did wanna say this parchment paper does add a couple things to this. One, it's gonna keep it so your coals don't stick to your uh, tabletop here. And two, it allows the wood to move just a little bit underneath of here. A lot of people don't talk about that, but if you clamp these too tight, then your joints won't be able to be sucked in together close enough to each other to give a good bond. So the parchment paper or wax paper will help it slide just a little bit so these joints close up tightly. Now these pocket holes can be driven in with a drill. I like to use an impact driver and just give it a couple notches once it hits bottom. So now that we have all of these pocket holes in, you can see that there's plenty of glue squeeze out. I'm gonna take a wet rag and I'm gonna wipe all of it down so that I have to deal with less of that later on when we go to sand this thing. With all the glue wiped off, we're gonna go ahead and set this off to the side and let it cure while we go ahead and make the base. So now it's time to work on these legs. I have three more two by sixes right here in front of me. Yes, that means that you will need 10 two by sixes for this entire project. We do need a couple more boards in here, so stick around and I will let you know what those are. So these are our eight foot two by sixes. And um, I did the same treatment on those other ones where I ripped off the edges, except for these ones I made a little bit thinner at five inches. So out of these five inch wide boards that we now have, I'm going to cut eight 28 inch long pieces. Now, if you have a miter saw, you can cut these a little bit longer because you can use a stop block later on to make sure that all of these leg assemblies are exactly the same length. And I will show you that later on in this video. So I'm going to cut my 28 inch pieces out of here. I'm going to mark out where my 28 is. And then I can use a combination square as a straight edge for my saw blade here. Here we are with our 28 inch long piece. Remember, we need eight of these. Now that we have eight of these cut out, I'm going to go ahead and give these that tapered look that we're looking for. So what I'm gonna do is from one edge, I'm going to measure in two inches. And then on that same edge, I'm going to go ahead and measure up 22 inches. And then all that I'm going to do is take a straight edge and line that up and strike a mark. Now this is going to give us the taper that we want on one of those legs. And we need to have it on the second side as well. But one more treatment that I'm going to do to this is I'm going to set the board next to that other board here that we just marked. 
and I'm going to trace a line on that. The reason why I'm gonna do that is we're going to cut off that roughly one and a half inch section so that this will look symmetrical on both sides. So from that point, how we have this line drawn on here, on the opposite side, I'm going to measure that two inch mark and then up the 22 inches. These are going to be able to give us a template for the other six that we need to cut. So once we get these cut out, we can just trace these onto the other ones. I'm just gonna go ahead and use a straight edge and that circular saw to make these cuts. Once we have all of these wedges and the side pieces cut off of all of these boards, we need to assemble these legs. So what I'm gonna do is you could use pocket hole screws for this, but then you'll have exposed holes on the sides here and that's pretty unsightly and we don't want that. So what we are going to do is just glue and clamp them together. Again, we're using Type Bond 2 glue and uh, we're just gonna spread it right on here. Make sure that you line up all of your edges. Now the reason why we want square edges is because that's gonna give us a better look. You're not gonna have the roundovers at the joint and this is going to make it so it looks like one continuous piece of wood. So once we have everything lined up, just gonna go ahead and clamp it into place. Now, just like the tabletop, make sure that you wipe off the glue because then that will make sanding later on a lot easier. I'm gonna set this off to the side and then do the other three legs in the same fashion. Remember that this smaller piece goes onto the face of the larger piece. Now that it's been a couple hours, I need to get the clamps off of these things. That worked better than expected. So here are our leg assemblies. You can see that they have this nice taper to them. Now I did make a couple of these longer because I wanted to show how it is that you can trim these up on a miter saw. In the end, we want a total of 28 inches of height on these things because the table is normally about 29 to 30 inches tall. So if we do 28 inch tall legs and then we add an inch and a half thick top on top of it, it'll get us right at that 29 and a half inch height. So if you're not working with a miter saw, we cut all of these to 28 inches and then we made sure that the ends were nice and flush with each other. But if you have a miter saw, we're just gonna trim a little bit on the ends here and then we're gonna set up a stop block, slide it over the stop block, and then cut the long end at 28 inches. This is gonna make sure that all of our legs are an equal length. Now we need to cut our aprons for this. Now that we have those legs all cleaned up and out of clamps, I can show you the taper here, how much this looks. So when you're just looking at it, it doesn't look like a whole lot, but when you compare them next to each other, you can really start to see the separation as it goes down this. So what we need to do next is these aprons. I'm gonna set these two off to the side here. So the material that we're going to be using for the aprons is a one by four. The one by four is gonna be thinner than this two by material. And that is going to allow us to have it flush with the inside face of the leg here. That's gonna give us a little bit of a step in and just class up this project a little bit more. You can use a two by four for this, but I would highly recommend having that little bit of a step to make this look a little bit better. So our table is going to be 72 inches long and I want a four inch gap or all the way around where these legs are going to sit in here. So that means that I need to subtract eight because there's gonna be four on each side from the total length of what our base is going to be. So I have these legs set here and they are back to back and this is going to give me a little bit of a referential measurement. So instead of having to measure each one of these legs and then subtract that from everything, now all we need to do is have these back to back and measure all the way down here. So we want eight inches less than 72, so we need to have 64 inches. So that means that our actual measurement of this board is just over 54 inches. So I'm reading 54 and one eighth of an inch. So for me, it's a lot easier to just do it that way, then I don't have to worry about screwing up any type of math. I've got two of these one by fours and I'm going to go ahead and cut them at that mark. So now that we have our long aprons cut, we need to go ahead and cut our short aprons. This is gonna be a similar math problem to the one that we had before. 
we have a 36 inch wide table and we wanna take off eight inches from that. So that means we're gonna be at 28 inches. So I'm, I have my legs here back to back, measuring out to 28. That means that this board is going to be about 18 and an eighth. So we can round those numbers down and that's perfectly fine, 54 inches and 18 inches. And uh, nobody's gonna really tell that difference of an eighth of an inch while it's underneath the table. We are going to cut two of these at that. Now that we have our 18 inch pieces here, we need to think about some bracing that's going to be in the center of this so it will support the center of our tabletop. I will be making that out of two by fours to give a little bit more rigidity. So, and those guys are not gonna be the same length as these guys here. So I'm going to go ahead and build the entire base. Then I can use a tape measure and measure exactly how big I need to cut those two by fours. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the giveaway that we are doing for this table. I wanted to give away this table to a family that is in need. Now, if you are a family in need, you can go ahead and comment down in the comment section below. I would like to have this giveaway in my local area in Eastern Iowa. If you are outside of the Eastern Iowa area, I'm not gonna be able to ship this, but if you traveled to the Eastern Iowa area, we can have a handoff that way. But if you are looking to get entered into this giveaway, I just ask that you start a comment off with my name, and that is Andy, and Go ahead and tell your story down in the comments section below. You can also email me how we are going to determine who gets this giveaway table. I'm going to go ahead and post the stories in my members section, and then we can go ahead as a community and decide who's going to get this table. I am really appreciating the support, and please share this video with a family that you may think needs this table this holiday season. So once we have these aprons cut, I'm gonna go ahead and put some pocket holes in the ends of this, and then I'm gonna have a couple right here in the middle, and that's going to go up into the tabletop. With the pocket holes drilled into this, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the side sections first, and then I'm going to go ahead and put it on the long sections. Make sure that your pocket holes that you have that are going to go up into the tabletop are actually facing that direction. I'm gonna add glue on the ends of these and screws as well, so that is going to make sure that this is a very tight joint. Now I do have this spaced up three quarters of an inch so that I am flush with the backside of this table leg. These are two and a half inch screws that we will be using for this as well. And this is what that side assembly is going to look like. Well, that gives us our perimeter of our frame completely built. Now, like I said, I wanna put a couple supports right here in the center. We can just go ahead and take our tape measure and measure that. Oh, 25 and 3 eighths of an inch. Now, this is a referential measurement. I'm doing it with everything built. The plans may read a little bit different than this, but this is the importance of having referential measurements. If we rounded down to the 54 and 18, then we could have a different measurement here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut mine, which is 25 and 3 eighths of an inch. And uh, I'm gonna put pocket holes on both ends of it, and I'm gonna have pocket holes going up towards the tabletop. I'm gonna get those installed and I'll be right back. Well, here is our base completely made up. You can see that it is nice and sturdy. So now that we have this base made up, we can head back over to our tabletop, which should be dry by this point in time. If you are worried about it, you can let it sit overnight, but we need to cut that thing to its final dimensions. Now that we have this tabletop back on the bench, I have the coals taken off of it, but I have the bottom coals still down against my tabletop, and that has this tabletop lifted up off of my bench top because we are going to go ahead and cut this to its size that it needs to be as a final project. So we want this thing to be 36 inches wide and 72 inches long. So I have my trusty straight edge here and I have it offset from my line about five inches. I have this flipped up 
upside down so that I can see all the pocket hole screws. So I'm making sure that I'm not cutting in to any of these pocket hole screws. When you're making this cut, just make sure that you're out of the way of these pieces that are gonna fall and don't try to catch them, just let them fall to the ground. So now that we have our true end here, we're going to measure 72 inches that direction and make the same cut. I like to make these cuts end, end, then side, side, because then I'm not having to worry about compounding angles. So if this side is off just a little bit, it's not gonna make the thing turn into a parallelogram. Well, now that I got a bunch of sawdust in my shoes, this is the last cut and it makes our table 36 inches wide and 72 inches long. Now I said that I was gonna use as minimal power tools as possible. So we have a sanding block. I'm gonna to get to work on this guy, get him all flattened out and take out all of these ridges. So I'm gonna sand this thing from 80 grit to 220 grit. That's gonna take a while with this little hand sander. So if you have a powered sander, I would highly recommend using that. You can use a belt sander, you can use an orbital sander. Heck, you can even go find a cabinet shop that has a wide belt sander and run this thing through it. Most wide belt sanders are 36 inches wide. So this is a great project to fit through one of those guys. And it takes no time at all to run this through. So I will see you guys in a little bit. Well, I have a confession for everyone. I did have this whole spiel about how I was gonna hand sand all of this and do all that, but I actually took some of my own advice and I went to my local cabinet shop. And I absolutely wanna thank Dudat Custom Kitchens for helping me out with this project. They have a wide belt sander there and they let me use it. And when I told them that this was a giveaway project, they let me rent out the time on that for free. So thank you Dudak for sponsoring this video as well. So once we did the wide belt sander, I did hand sand this up to 180 grit and now we are ready to stain this thing. The stain that I will be using is Verithane and it is a true brown. This is going to give me a similar color to Walnut and it only has about a one hour dry time. So we are going to stain this top. I have my gloves here, link in the description below. And I really like to use these foam staining pads. I will also have those linked down below as well. Now, because this stuff is the fast cure time, it only needs to sit on the tabletop for about two to three minutes and then you wipe it back off. So you need to work really quickly with this stuff. I do have some blue shop rags so that we can wipe this off after the three minute set time. And I did test this on one of my cutoff pieces. So I know that this is the color that we're looking for. So let's go ahead and hop onto this. Now I would recommend not being like me and starting in the corner closest to you. Start in the center, work your way out. That is the color that I am looking for. Now, some people like this, some people don't, but on pine, there is a lot of variation in the density of the wood. And in the knots, sometimes it doesn't suck in the color quite as much as the rest of the wood. So you'll get some highlights and some low lights, but in this rustic look that we're going for, it is a very, very good thing. Well, now that we have transformed this wood right before your eyes, you need to do the other side too. Don't be one of those people that doesn't stain the bottom or finish the bottom. You will have problems. It could be unsightly. Somebody will see it in the future. Or if you don't finish it, you're gonna have moisture wick out of one side more than the other side and all of your boards are gonna cup or bow and it's gonna destroy your projects in the future. So off camera, I'm going to go ahead, do the same treatment to this tabletop, uh, the other side of it and I'm gonna do it to the base. Once we let this cure for about an hour, then we can put our finish on top of that. Well, you can see here that we have the base all stained and our tabletop. We do have a couple more things that we need to go through. And the next thing that I normally would do is I would add my finish on top of that. I'm using some wipe-on polyurethane. And honestly, it's a very, very similar process to putting stain on. You put it on the surface, wipe it in, let it dry, and I use about three to four coats of this to make sure that I'm completely protected. 
So instead of boring you with that one, I'm gonna show you an equally important process, and that is squaring up this base to this tabletop. So like I had said earlier on in the video, I wanted these corners to be four inches from the sides and the ends of this table. So we have everything flipped up, upside down. You can see the pocket holes here in the tabletop. This is going to be the bottom because nobody wants to see pocket holes while they're eating. So uh, all we're really gonna do is I'm just gonna measure about the four inches to each one of these. And if it needs to move just a little bit, I can move this a lot easier than trying to finagle everything together. So you can see this one needs to move just a smidge. And then once you have everything all secured, then all we're gonna do is run those pocket holes into place. Now I did screw up on these side pieces and I had my material thickness at the wrong height, so I'm going to be using different screws. But if you have everything set how you're supposed to, you can use two and a half inch Craig screws to get everything secured here. Now, if you put your polyurethane on before you attach this base to your tabletop, then you are completely finished. Make sure that your polyurethane is completely dried and it is ready for use. So this does take a little bit of time, so I would not start it the day before Thanksgiving. I would give it about a week for your polyurethane to completely cure, but uh, this is a great project and it's very rewarding because you can eat dinner on it every single night. This is a very good project that you can try and sell as well. A lot of people need a new dining room table, and yes, I know that there's pocket holes and things like that, but they would much rather have a hand-built table than something that they buy from a big box store. Build one of these, put it out on Marketplace, and just see how it goes. You've got about $100 in materials, so I would say put it up three, four, five hundred dollars $500 and see if it sells in your area. That's one of those things is marketing and making it presentable when you're on Marketplace or selling it in other areas is very, very important. So make sure you stage this thing and get it exactly how you would want it in your home so that they can really envision it in their home. Again, if you've made it this far, I really, really appreciate everyone that's here. If you haven't yet, please hit subscribe so that I know that you're enjoying the content and it really helps grow this channel. Remember, we're trying to hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. We do have that giveaway that we're trying to give for this table. So make sure that you are sharing this with families that you may think need a table like this one. If you would like to build a table like this one and you wanted plans for it, remember there is that option to get plans for free if you become a member to this channel. That is going to be forever. I know that the giveaway is going to end at some point in time, but if you become a member, I'm always gonna have that option available. Even if it's four years down the road, you can go into our members tab and you can go ahead and pick up the plans there. Anyways, for now, my name is Andy. This has been Cedar River Woodworking and we'll see you in the next video.